so how are you all i really hope that you are doing well in your studies as well as simultaneously you are keeping your health up to the mark so that you can give your more than 100 percent in the upcoming exams all right so today's session is a very interesting session and this session is mainly based on the econometric session because if you remember i have taken up a poll about the topic that you want the next video or next session on so that is why the maximum vote went for the econometrics and therefore we are here with a very interesting session on econometrics okay now in econometrics we know there are broadly three types of data sets right what are those one is uh, we have our cross-section data set cross-section or which is uh, under short form it is written as cs data so this is number one there are many types of data sets i'm just highlighting the main one so here is cross-section data then we have the time series data or which is known as ts and three <clears throat> we have a pooled data or let's say a panel data first so panel data is where we have cross-section as well as the time series data and of course the next set of data set is the pooled data set now in all our previous sessions of econo economics media we have mainly focused on this cross-sectional part of the data however today i am going to focus on a very interesting topic of this time series data set and this concept that I'm going to discuss, it will be discussed in a very crisp manner so that for you, of course, we take care of that particular aspect that you understand the concept and you remember them because that is where the importance of lectures remains. All right. So time series, uh, important concept we are going to discuss in here and the following uh, panel data and pool data, we will be taking up, uh, taking up sessions but definitely it will be in our upcoming sessions all right so without any further ado let's begin with an interesting concept related to time series all right so the important topic that i am going to discuss today is what is known as the concept of unit root I'm quite sure that most of you have gone through the concept of unit root but but this unit root concept is related to econometrics and I've just mentioned that this is related mainly from the time series data of econometrics. So what is this unit root is, how we can find it and what is the importance of unit root about that we are going to taking up this session. So unit root it implies now, before getting along with the unit rule, first few of the things that you need to understand and you need to know, that is a time series data. It can be either AR series, either MA series or ARMA series and the fourth one is ARIMA series. Okay, these are the four broad categories of time series data. Alright, now. I'm just giving you and walking you through all the types and just will give you a glance about how the data, uh, how the series looked uh, like in each of the four types. All right. So here AR series is obviously it's defined as YT and it is a function of the past period of itself as well as the current period of the error term. However, the MA series, it is YT and it is a function of the current period of error term and all the past periods of the error term. Now, here I am describing this AR of order 1 and here this is also MA of order 1. Now, what is ARMA? It is nothing but it is a summation of AR plus MA. So, if I am talking about ARMA 1, now what that this bracket term one represents these are the lagged terms all right so uh, ar1 that means lag period one that is why here y t minus one is there ma1 that means t minus one so current period of the error and the one period lag term of the error that is there in the ma series so if 
arma is let's say of lag length 1 that means we have to write 1 comma 1 then it will be a summation of arma 1 and ma 1 all right so this is how the forms are getting along however i'm not going in details related to all these forms but if you want me to take up these sessions on ar arma or ma series feel free to tell us below in the comment section or you can also contact us um, through our official mail id as well as the whatsapp number it is given appearing on your screen and you can also find it below in the description box all right so this is about the time series data and these are the broadly time series data now among all these ar ma arma and arima now this uh, arma and arima is something that is related to further advanced level of econometrics and that is why ignoring these particular two types of data series into today's from, from today's discussion i'm ignoring this part however i am only going to focus on to this ar and ma series now what do i mean by focusing since we are discussing the unit roots we have to know the characteristics of these two types that is ar as well as the ma series now i have just now told you that in under ma let's say of ma1 so yt how it will look like it will look something like this this is the format of ma ma of order 1 under this this if silent t is nothing but the white noise due to it is the white noise that means it is satisfying all the assumptions of clrm since it is satisfying all the assumptions of clrm therefore this if silent t is biased and consistent and therefore we can find that this yt is nothing but yt is becoming stationary stationary means in what sense stationary this must be a question that is arising stationary means with the period of time as it is changing with the change in the time there is no change in yt there if this is a situation then we can say that a particular series is stationary all right and now under time series we always have to take care that whether the series is stationary or not because if the series is stationary or not stationary depending on these uh, two conditions we have the further inferences therefore under time series data it is always very much important to find out whether a series is stationary or not now why i am focusing on this stationary or non-stationary part because this is where the unit root kicks in so this is about ma and under ma i have told you that yt is stationary that means if a series is following ma that means the series is always always stationary however if the series is not following ma let's say the series is following ar that means if the series is following autoregressive process then we can find that yt can be stationary or not so there are two chances but under ma it will always be stationary okay so here we have to uh, if the series is following ar series it doesn't matter of which lag length that means order one two or higher order it doesn't matter but if a series is following ar then we have to test that whether there is uh, whether the series is stationary or not now while testing for this stationarity or not we come across the concept of this unit root okay so let us say that our ar of order 1 our series is following ar of order 1 then how our series look like yt is definitely equal to phi naught phi 1 yt minus 1 plus of epsilon t this is the general format this is random walk model with drift all right now here we have to find the inverse characteristic function as well as the characteristic function that means i am first going to introduce the lag operator okay and after doing this we will simply find yt this is equal to phi naught and epsilon t 
right? But let's say my phi naught is equal to zero. Let us say, then obviously my phi naught is going away only if salient T is there on the right hand side. Fine. So here, this is our inverse characteristic function. And from here, if I put like uh, this is phi one into L, of course the lag operator is there. And if I am just uh, substituting this z as one of the characteristic root of this equation, then we will find that z is equal to phi 1. And if this value is equal to 1, if the characteristic root's value is equal to 1, this shows that there is presence of unit root. So I am just giving you a brief about how to find uh, the unit root in a uh, series if it is following AR of 1. However, uh, there is of course testing of how unit root is there about which I am coming in just few seconds. So this is a general format by which you can find that whether the series is for having unit root or not. So we have found out that if a series is having a unit root then we can find this. Uh, that by this procedure we can find that the, yes the series is having a unit root. What does it imply? What is the econometric inferences if there is a unit root? Please note it down very carefully that if there is a unit root, then it implies the series is not stationary, but it is uh, not stationary. That means it is changing with time. And if this is so, then we can find that the series is stochastic and it is following DSP that means different stationary process. Stochastic trend is there and it is following our DSP or different stationary process. So this is the implication of the presence of unit root. This portion is very important, try to remember. So this is about the unit root. But how to test the unit root? Now in your uh, questions, if you check out the past year question, you will find doesn't matter for which exam you are preparing, if you are preparing for MA entrance or for IES or for higher, any other PhD level of economics, uh, economics entrances, doesn't matter for which type of exam you are preparing. This under econometric, this unit root plays a very important role in understanding your concepts. Okay, so let me quickly make you walk through the testing of unit root. If we have to test the presence of unit root, testing of unit root. Now the method I have just shown in the beginning, it is a layman's method. So if the characteristic root's value is equal to 1, we can find that the series is containing unit root. But it is not always possible in our daily life to find out that which type of AR series it is following, isn't it? And uh, therefore, we don't know that how the characteristic uh, roots will look like. Therefore, here is the general testing of, uh, testing of unit root is there, which uh, was given in 1979 by Dickey Fuller. It is also popularly known as DF test. So DF test is the test where we do it, uh, where we test the presence of unit root. Now, few things you have to remember about the Dickey Fuller test that it is only applicable to AR1 process. Alright, and here the null hypothesis is such that it shows that there is presence of unit root. That means it shows presence of unit root. However, the alternative um, hypothesis is no unit root. Now, if we fail to reject the null hypothesis, here the inferences comes in. If we fail to reject the null hypothesis, that means we are by default accepting the null hypothesis. If we are accepting it, that means what? There is presence of unit root. So, in a table format, you can write it down. Let me explain it here. Reject null. And here, fail to reject null. If this is the case, this is where I am focusing right now. If I fail to reject the null hypothesis, that means the series is 
containing unit root and if this is so that means the series is non stationary and there is stochastic trend with dsp but if i am able to reject the null hypothesis that means i am accepting the alternative where there is no unit root if there is no unit root so you will write no unit root and the series is stationary and of course there is not stochastic trend is there however deterministic trend can be present or not but there is no stochastic trend all right and if there is no stochastic trend that means it shows that there is no unit root all right so this is how dicky fuller in the year of 1979 they have given this testing of unit root so in this very short session i have tried to discuss the very important concept from econometrics that is the unit root in a very crisp and lucid manner i really hope that uh, you find the sessions uh, you find this session to be very much helpful however if there is anything that is unclear to you please feel free to contact us via our official mail id as well as the whatsapp number and send us or your doubt relating to any area of this unit root or from any other topic of economics we are always there for you thank you very much for your support and thank you very much for watching this i really hope to see you in our next sessions thank you